everyone, and welcome to the inaugural West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Let's give our inductees a round, round of applause. I know we're all excited today. I'm Rich Riley, and it is indeed a pleasure to serve as the Master of Ceremonies this afternoon, along with retired West Hoyles and Middle High School principal, Mr. Larry Murphy. Today is part two of the induction process for the inaugural class of 2015. Part one took place two days ago when many of the, many of the inductees or a family representative were introduced with family and friends prior to the Thanksgiving Day football game. It was a sunny and warm day with a welcoming crowd and an enthusiastic PA announcer who did a great job of making each inductee or family representative feel very special, as they should. It was a nice tribute to the inductees as we initiated induction weekend. There's been a rich tradition of athletics of West Boylston dating back to the pre-World War II days when the school was called Major Edwards High School. Over the years, West Boylston Middle High School has certainly made a name for itself in high school athletics. And today we begin to honor those who have made significant contributions to the legacy of Lions Athletics. The plans are to induct the class each year there is a home Thanksgiving Day football game. Beginning in 2017, teams will become eligible for induction. There are nomination forms at your tables. Please feel free to fill those out and send them in to Mike Barkas. And also at your table, tables, you will see an order of events, and that is the order of uh, events that are going to take place uh, this afternoon. I also have some of our induction booklets, and I also have extra induction booklets. So, if you need one, please make sure you see me before you uh, leave today. For a small Division III school, West Forest Middle High School's athletic achievements have been pretty remarkable. A number of state and district E championships, student athletes continuing their education and participation in athletics at Ivy League, Patriot League, Northeast 10 Conference, New Mac, and MassCAC schools on the Divisions 1 two, and three levels. While we have had other student athletes enlist in the United States Armed Forces and serve our country, it is obvious that the education they received at West Boylston played a significant role in helping them to prepare for life. Our nine inductees today cover seven decades from the 1940s through the 2000s the three staff members, Jake O'Connor, Ron Eklund, and Joe Garofoli. Yes, give them a hand, please. They dedicated over a hundred years of combined service to West Boylston Public Schools from the 1950s into the 1990s and were building blocks and foundation pieces in the development of Lions Athletics. We had three student athletes who stood out in the 1940s, 1960s, and early 1970s when only a handful of sports existed. Bob Bonsey Sr., John Bancroft, and Ken Bowling. We have three student athletes who stood out in the 1980s, 1990s, and early 2000s as multi-sport student athletes when more sports had been added. Lisa Harsipian, Meredith Galena, and Kelly Ambrose. <laughs> a 
Our Athletic Hall of Fame committee has worked diligently to organize this huge endeavor, and I would like to introduce them at this time. Three individuals who were West Boylston student athletes, graduates, and our current staff members at the school. Athletic Director, Mr. Michael Botkiss. <laughs> Coach Kelly Molesky. <laughs> and they're all back there. And Coach, Mr. Kevin B. Auckland. <laughs> Other members of our committee, West Boylston Athletic Association President, Mr. Kevin O'Malley. <laughs> and retired principal, Mr. Larry Murphy. <laughs> My sincere gratitude to you for your dedication to help make this initiative become a reality. I also would like to extend my, extend my thanks to Flower Land owners John and Linda Bancroft for the gift of flowers for our inductees and presenters. Thank you. And a huge round of applause for Mr. Patrick Hayes, our photographer. Thank you. And I want to make sure I mention to the inductees and the families, when we uh, finish this afternoon, please feel free to come up and take pictures holding your plaques and uh, have some fun with that uh, later on uh, this afternoon. We have West Boylston Public Access representatives Trevor Dillman, right there, and Cliff DeMelo Shea. Cliff is a student at the Middle High School, member of the Producers Club. They are videotaping today's induction ceremony that will be aired in the future on the West Boylston Public Access. Also want to give a shout out to our seven West Boylston Middle High School student athletes who are assisting us today. Katie Gauthier. Andy Peretti. Zach McGarrian, Max O'Day, Alec Ada, Marissa Hayes, and Terry Doherty. Thank you. Help is much appreciated. And our, of course, our appreciation to the inductees or inductee representatives for pri providing us with the necessary information and items needed for the collaboration of this event. There was much asked of them, and they responded in a positive way, like the Hall of Famers they or their family members are about to become this afternoon. There were some people in attendance who were guests of ours today, and I would like to recognize them. First, from the West Boylston Public Schools, Superintendent of Schools, Miss Elizabeth Shopper. <laughs> Middle High School Principal, Mr. Chris Fournier. <laughs> Assistant Principal, Mr. Dave Lazat. School committee members, Ms. Jada Morgan and Mr. Jim Fedoni. MIAA Central Sectional Basketball Tournament Director and retired Oxford High School Principal, Mr. Roger Bacon. MIAA State and Central Sectional Softball Tournament Director and retired Wachusa Regional High School Athletic Director, Mr. Rich Lewis. <laughs> retired Wachusa Regional High School Principal and a past president of the MIAA, Mr. Hal Lane. Former West Boylston Middle High School boys basketball coach, Mr. Paul Constantino. 
Worcester State University head women's basketball coach, Miss Karen Tesmer. I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation of past and present pitches and media articles of the inductees. We'll continue to project the PowerPoint during the upcoming meal. And then about 2 o'clock, the inductees or their family representatives will be called out to the hallway along with our West Boylston student athletes to be assembled and introduced and escorted in by a WB student athlete. Also, if you finish dinner early, please feel free to go over and peruse the inductee folders and memorabilia uh, table. A lot of great stuff over there. Following the invocation, the hostesses will invite each table up to partake of the buffet, and then we will see you again at about 2 o'clock. Now for our invocation, if we could please bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here today to honor our inaugural class of 2015 West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. We thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us and ask that you please bless the food that we are about to receive from your bounty through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Enjoy dinner and we'll see you at two. People in the audience, you are welcome to come up and take pictures at any time. If you'd like to come up here, uh, please feel free. To the, today we're celebration, uh, celebrating the induction of nine people into the West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame. This is their day, and having memories to remember this special day is very important. So please feel free to come up with your cameras. At this time, let us meet our inductees or their family representative. Escorted by Marissa Hayes is retired principal and athletic director, Mr. Carlton Jake O'Connor. Kerry Darty and accepting for coach Joe Garofoli is his son, Mr. Michael Garofoli. <laughs> Escorted by Zach Magarian and accepting for Athletic Director and Coach Mr. Ron Eckblom is his wife, Miss Ginny Eckblom. <laughs> Escorted by Katie Gothier from the class of 1945 is Mr. Bob Bonsi Sr. <laughs> Escorted by Kerry Doherty from the class of 1965 is Mr. John Bancroft. by Marissa Hayes from the class of 1971 is Mr. Ken Bolin. <laughs> Escorted by Andy Proetti from the class of 1989 is Miss Lisa Hobsepian. Escorted by Mr. Ken Bolin from the class of 
presented by Alec Tater from the class of 1993 is Miss, Miss Meredith Galena. Escorted by Max O'Day. From the class of 2001 is Miss Kelly Ambrose. <laughs> Certainly a worthy group of inductees, so let us begin. Today's First inductee is retired principal and athletic director, Mr. Carlton Jake O'Connor, whose legacy at West Boylston Middle High School and his many contributions to school, athletics, community, Central Massachusetts, and the MIAA are well known. Jake served West Boylston faithfully from 1957 to 1987 as a coach assistant principal, athletic director, and principal. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium, Mr. Roger Bacon. Richie, I've been in a number of weeks. Hall of Fame bodies, and I'll tell you, this tops them all. Great job. <laughs> what many of you may not know is that Jake started his career in Oxford, 1952, 1957. So I went back and I tried to find some people that might still be there, and I did. And I said to one of them, how did we ever get Jake? And they said, well, from Vermont, you get good cheese, <laughs> you get good maple syrup, I'm sure we get good teachers, and that's what we did. I found some of the players that he had on his teams, and I got comments from them, and some of the uh, students he had as teachers, and I got comments from them. One of the comments jumped out at me was, he tells you as it is, he's an honest fellow, and that's Jake. Good coach, they told me, good teacher, and he even taught driver ed. And I saw one of, uh, one of our girls who was a retired teacher, and I said, you have Jake and driver ed? She says, yes, and I haven't had an accident in 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> he was a basketball coach, baseball coach, cross country coach for five years, and I know when he left Oxford, the kids really were upset. Why is he leaving this? when we need him here. They said, you know, Jake, once a pirate, always a pirate. So, Jake, I brought a tie for you, a pirate tie. <laughs> and I know you wouldn't wear it, but I brought it along anyway. My wife wouldn't allow it. And I didn't have a blue and white one, so. But he was an outstanding coach and teacher in Oxford, and he did go to West Boylston in 1957. And there he became a teacher, eventually athletic director and principal. And I know uh, competing with Wes Boylston, we always had our hands full. He did a great job over there. He was a great principal. In the 60s and the 70s, the MIA was almost non-existent. And we really didn't have much of a basketball tournament. But Jake and some other principals and athletic directors got together and they put together a format that now exists pretty much in terms of uh, having our state our district finals at WPI. So Jake did that for a couple of years, and then he moved on uh, to, I assume, administrative duties here at the high school. And I was fortunate enough to replace him as a basketball tournament director, so we've been at it for quite a while. Uh, we have the music in the background? Yeah. <laughs> or that next door? Well, Jake would love to get up and dance. I know he and Terry used to dance all the time. I know um, there's a number of awards listed in the back there. 
that Jake has received, and I just wanted to point out two or three of them. One of them was a clock chair that he received either 1981 or 1982, and he was recognized by those colleagues of his, athletic directors and principals, by awarding him the chair for all the efforts that he had put in at the clock tournament. In 19, uh, 2009, he received the Sherm Kinney Award from the MIAA. And that's probably the highest award they can give for outstanding contributions to basketball in the state of Massachusetts. And then, of course, this Hall of Fame Award being recognized by your peers in this community is certainly outstanding and certainly well deserved. So, like, congratulations, Jake, on that. You know, being a principal is not easy. And Jake has done an outstanding job. As principal, the kids own you, the teachers own you, the community owns you, and hopefully your family owns you. And Jake handled it all with a calm and success. And I know as a fellow principal, we all look to Jake for advice at times and uh, some suggestions at times. And I always remember in uh, the early 80s, my first year as principal, Jake, when he was coaching in Oxford, coached at what became the middle school. And my first year as principal in Oxford, we had a major fire in the high school. So we had to put our games down at the middle school. Well, the middle school was a nice gym, about the same seating capacity as you have here, and a stage. So with that one game, West Boylston came over to play us. And the kids are all sitting up on the stage from Oxford. And when they introduced the West Boylston players, all the kids from Oxford held up a newspaper in front of them. You've seen kids do this. And they get it from Duke University and the colleges. And now it's everybody stands and watches the game. But they come up with these gimmicks to be seen. Jake said to me later in the, after the game, he said, Roger, what those kids did was not professional. It was not good sport. I said, and I thought about it. I said, Jake, you're right. And that was a lesson for me from Jake. But the way he handled it to me, he didn't give me a lecture. He just said, it's not, it's not a, a sportsman like a, a comment on the terms of what's going on in the game. And I learned a real lesson from Jake on that. So my thanks to you, Jake, for helping me in that situation. The other thing I wanted to mention was Jake's family. Terry, 63 years of marriage. And if you think being principal stuff, you want to be a principal's wife. <laughs> the principals in those days were out every night of the week. They were in games, musicals, plays, you name it, and they were gone. So you got to see him once in a while. And I know with Terry, they would spend one night a week going dancing. And uh, you do need some sort of outlet. But all I can say, Jake, is Terry and you did a good job looking at your family here today. It's just wonderful to see them all. And finally, I placed Jake in the category the top principals that I've known in my lifetime, and I've known a lot of them, and I've worked with a lot of them. And Jake, you have a legend here, and you've made a difference. So my congratulations to you on this award.
surprise and so appreciative for the many people who came here today. It's hard to express your appreciation because I feel so astounded by the friendship and the people that I have known over the years. And I certainly appreciate your attendance today and I'm very, very pleased. So thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Murphy, and I am the retired West Boylston Middle High School principal. Thank you. That's good. Nobody threw anything at me. Um, Roger, you're correct. High school principals are out every night, and that's one of the reasons why I retired. I ran out of gas. <laughs> I have the honor and the privilege of um, inducting the next person or sharing some background on the next inductee. Coach Joe Garifoli was a man who set a high standard for coaches at West Boylston Middle High School. He was a staff member for 36 years, coached five of today's inductees, is a Hall of Fame basketball coach whose West Boylston teams won five Clark University tournament championships. In 1965, 1966, 1969, 1970, and 1972. He also coached West Boylston Southfall to a District E Championship in 1991. His accomplishments are legendary. And I know because I was a young coach, coaching girls basketball, and I had to coach against him, and I didn't do very well. So Joe was a great guy. Um, Unfortunately, Joe passed away in 2013 and is dearly missed. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium former West Boylston Middle High School boys basketball coach, Mr. Paul Cosentino. thank everyone for being here today and certainly the committee that has put forth such a wonderful effort and initiative in establishing the Hall of Fame here in the community of West Boylston. Uh, I was very honored and humbled when uh, Mike Garfoli, Coach Garfoli's son, asked me to present him today uh, at the Hall of Fame awards ceremony. When Mike asked me a few weeks ago, he said, Connie, which is my nickname in Clinton, everyone has a nickname in Clinton, uh, he said, my father's life and your life are so interwoven in so many ways, I can't think of anyone who would be uh, better able to express some of my father's uh, thoughts, sentiments, emotions on such a day. So if you would please allow me, let me talk a little bit about our lives together, how I came to know Coach Joe Gar Garofoli. And so in, in so doing, I'll be referencing many of the people who are here today anyways, and I don't mean to leave out many names or any names, because I know so many of you either had Coach Garofoli as a teacher through his, illust his illustrious career at West Boylston, or certainly as a coach in all three sports. I first came to know Mr. Garofoli in 19... 69, 70, 71. He ran the summer basketball program in Clinton. Uh, it was an outdoor league behind the high school, where is now the elementary school in Clinton, and the fire station. And uh, some of the men who are here today played in that same league. They played with us. Coach Garfoli ran the league. He was the director. It gave us an opportunity to play basketball in, in, in the summer. And uh, of course, we all knew he was the coach at West Boylston High. Lo and behold, later, in 1971, and I spoke to Mr. Garofoli a lot about this throughout the years, uh, 
His West Boylston team, which Kenny Bowen was a member of, played Clinton in the 1971 district quarterfinal game at Leominster High. For those of you old enough to remember, it was the same night at one of the Ali Frazier fights. Um, long story short, Joe being a lifetime Clintonian and a lifetime West Boylston teacher coach, the anxiety, the tension, the pressure of all of that was, you know, just a tremendous impact upon him. West Boylston won that game that night, 60 to 55. Kenny Wallen had a great game as the Joe Yanian, if I'm mentioning it, it correctly. Uh, a very good friend of ours, many of us here from Clinton, whose picture has been up there today with Kenny. Uh, John Murphy scored 38 points in that game. UMass coach Jack Lehman was at that game at Leominster High, as was Tommy O'Connor, who had coached Clinton two years before. And lo and behold, Tommy O'Connor recruits Kenny to go to Dartmouth, and uh, Jack Lehman re recruits Murph to go to UMass. Uh, that's where I first came to know Coach. Um, as I graduated from, from Assumption College and started coaching a 7th and 8th grade basketball team in 1980-81, uh, I had uh, Timmy Coyne on that team. His brother Jimmy is here today. Timmy was a 1,000-point scorer at Merrimack. I had Scott Young on that team as 8th graders who was an Olympian, professional hawk, hockey player, Stanley Cup uh, champion, Todd Bailey, the list goes on. I also had a 7th grader on that team, Joey Garfoli. Joey was Mr. Garfoli's son. I'm 23 years old at, at the time, and one day Coach Garfoli walks in. We used to practice at St. John's Gym in Clinton. Coach Garfoli comes up. Even now, I'm just 23 years old. He calls me Coach. He said, Coach, he said, uh, he said I know it's your first team. I'm excited for you. I, I remember you in Summer League. I know your family well. He said, never forget, 80 to 90% of the time, the team that wins the battle of the boards is going to win the game. So we have practice that day and everything, and I figure at the end of the practice, what better insight to give to these seventh and eighth graders? So I say, uh, you know, fellas, uh, another thing, we really have to concentrate on our rebounding, winning the battle of the boards. Uh, you win the rebounds, you win the game. 90, you know, 80 to 90 percent of the time. Coach Garfield is exact percentage words. All of a sudden, hand go, goes up to little Joe Garfield. Say, Coach, that doesn't make any sense to me. I said, what do you mean, Joey? He said, aren't points the most important stat? <laughs> I mean, he goes, you score more points than the other team, you're going to win 100% of the game. <laughs> so a week later, Coach Garfoli comes to St. John's Gym to pick up Joey. I can't resist because I was kind of puzzled by the whole, whole thing. I, I said, Coach, I have to mention something to you. I said, you know, your son said, you know, the rebounds aren't the most important stat. It, it's the points. He looks at me and said, Connie, don't listen to him. He doesn't know the nuances of the game. <laughs> uh, as I come to know, in the 80s, uh, I was actually o overseas for a while in, in the seminary, and I would come back and forth every now and then. Whenever I would run into coach, be it in town in Clinton, on a sidewalk, at the old timers, wherever it might, might be, Coach would always ask me, how are things going? How, how are you doing? How difficult is it? Et cetera, et cetera. He said, never forget. He said, if that doesn't work out for you, I really think you'd be a great teacher coach. Uh, a couple years later, I decided, as great as an experience that was, not to pursue that. And uh, immediately, Coach Garfoli called me at home and said, you have to get back into teaching. At that point in time, there were no jobs. Proposition two, two and a half, for all of you who remember. Uh, so he ended up ended up starting a career in the Department of Correction uh, and, and coaching. Uh, Bob Bonsi, who was the uh, varsity coach at West Boylston at that time, asked me to be his JV coach. I had grown up with Bobby my whole life in Clinton. He had been an assistant with Jimmy Donatopoulos, who was here earlier today. And uh, so I became the JV coach at West, West Boylston. Now myself and Coach Garfoli get to be very close throughout the years. Bobby leaves to take the head coach at Fitchburg State University, 1989, and uh, Ronnie Eckblum, I spoke with Jenny earlier today, Ronnie Eckblum and Joe Garfoli called me, so what are you going to do? Are you going to go with Bonds or stay at West Boylston? I said, well, I would really like to stay at West Boylston if, if possible, and uh, they offered me the position, and uh, 
you know, that's where I became so close with Coach Garofoli because we coached all three sports, football, basketball, girls, softball. I had done girls softball too uh, for a period of time in Clinton. When we were fortunate enough for two years, uh, 2007, 2008, the West Boylston teams that I coached at that time, we had some great teams. We were fortunate enough to win two Clark tournament titles. Um, one of our greatest honors was to have Coach Gar Foley on the floor with us after the 2008 title to present the plaques to the boys and the championship title to us as members of the community of West Boylston. I know it touched him very, very much. Those of you who know Coach well, knew him well, he would tear up often. Uh, he would tend to get emotional and uh, it just meant a lot to him. The final thing I want to say before I present his son to come up and get his award, uh, of all the interactions I had with Coach Gar Garofoli throughout those years, and there were many, many, as you well know, all the coaches here and people, lock locker rooms, post practices, talking to one another. Uh, you know, we, we became friends now too, and I remember it was two, 2012, my son's a sophomore in high school, and he's playing basketball, and I was really torn what to do. Uh, continue coaching at West Boylston, but I knew my son was going to play, and uh, not just be on the team, but he was he was going to play. He went to a different school. Uh, he was at St. St. Bernard's at at the time, and uh, I called Coach Gar Garofoli, and I said, "You know, Coach, what what do I do here?" And he said, "I was in the same spot." He said, "You can always coach a team." You can't always see your son play. He said, if I can offer you any words of advice, please watch your son play. He said, I did the same thing. It, it hurt very much when I left West, West Boylston, but it was the best decision that I ever made. So even though Coach Garofoli is not here today, and I've said this to him when he was still with us, uh, it was the best advice he, he could ever give a person. Uh, my final thoughts. Uh, and I don't know where I first heard, heard this, please don't attribute this to me, but when I think of Coach Garofoli and his interactions with student athletes throughout the years, uh, there's a quote I saw once when it was talked about someone who's aspiring to be a coach, and when we're younger we're all, you know, full of enthusiasm and you know, excitement and competition and all that and wins and losses, which are all very important. We're all, com we're all competitive. But I remember Joe mentioned it to me once. He said, never ever forget the games are never as important as the people who are, who are playing them. And I think Coach Joe Garofoli is the epitome of that sentiment. With that being said, I would like Michael Garofoli to come, to come up and accept the award on behalf of his father. This is a special honor for me because of my uh, my tight closeness with the uh, West Boston family. I consider, I see all these friends out here, faces that I, I remember since I was just a little kid. Uh, to give you an idea how um, how special it is, um, I practically grew up in, in the halls and in the gym of uh, West Boston High School. My first girlfriend was a West Boston cheerleader in the eighth grade. <laughs> uh, my first job was painting the lockers with my dad. Jake was Jake gave me a gig over the summer, we painted the lockers from Dick Priestley's uh, shop all the way to his office. We painted them blue, I remember. Um, my earliest memories are from uh, West Boylston. Um, John Bancroft, I remember as a five-year-old, uh, remember there, and the Clark tournament was, was fairly special as well. Um, in fact, I, I might have had a little bit of a learning disability as a child because I used to mix up Christmas and the Clark tournament season. <laughs> because we had a rule that you don't go downstairs until your parents are up. And I knew the winter time, Christmas, Thanksgiving, those types of things, if I was the first at the, at the top of the stairs, my dad might take me down and it would be good things would happen. 
and that's the way it was for Christmas in the days of the Clark tournament. So um, you have to forgive me for that. And uh, uh, I got to see and experience most of the people who were in here. Um, when I was 10 years old, I wanted to have uh, cypress, like any Bowen. <laughs> so like I said, John Bancroft was one of my first memories as a child. Uh, along with the, uh, Jake was one of my dad's uh, best friends and mentors. I believe he actually gave him his first job, which was the library. Um, he uh, spent a couple of years there then coaching. Um, getting to see Mary and Kelly play throughout the years, I realized that uh, women basketball players, women athletes in general, can do anything. And uh, it was really special watching them play. Uh, very close with the Bonte family. In fact, when uh, Richie uh, told me that the U.S. Boylston family was, was extending this honor to my dad, actually the, before that, he, he mentioned that it would be included uh, in the process, and I had no doubt that it would be selected. I wrote down 12 names, and eight of the nine that are here were on that list, and uh, because I had experienced that. Uh, Ronnie Ecklum was the, the badass, tough uncle I never had, <laughs> and he taught me how to uh, not take crap from anybody. And that was, that, was, that was Ronnie in general. Um, let's see if I'm missing anybody here. Uh, I didn't. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. Uh, to give you a little background on my dad, um, he wasn't uh, an exceptional guy at a lot of things. He, wasn't, he knew nothing about cards. He was, wasn't good at finance. He was a terrible card player. But he knew how to do something really well. He found found a way to do it, and he, he worked really, really hard at it, and that was coaching, and teaching in general. But teaching came to him almost as an afterthought, and I'll give you a little background on that. Uh, he was an exceptional athlete and had some opportunities to go to school, but he wasn't a great student, so he managed to get, uh, with the help of um, a mentor, get into Worcester Academy, where he, he, learned, uh, he learned how to do school halfway decent. Um, so then there was a, he was a priest. And then at Worcester Academy, a priest took him under his wing and managed to get him into Lafayette University where he played football for two years. And wasn't a great student there, but the, the priest drove him down to uh, Lafayette to get that. He transferred to Boston College where he was taught by Jesuit brothers. And um, my dad, had being a transfer, was a little short of credits, had to take a, take a class. And he took an obscure French class. And he wasn't doing very well in it. And it was time to graduate and he wasn't passing the class. And the, and the brother took him aside and says, Joe, says, uh, you're a really good guy, so I want to I want to make sure you graduate with your class on time, so I'm going to do you a favor and give you a passing rating. Yes, but you got to do me one favor. you got to promise you never go into teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he spend 34 years teaching, he taught French for 30 years. <laughs> so that's my dad. He, he figured out, and he, and, you know, he grew up in Italian, spoke a little Italian, uh, probably didn't know a bit of French when he started. Jake probably handed him the book. My dad learned the book, and he probably learned every assignment the day before he taught it. And he eventually got good at it. And that's what basketball and uh, sports in general was to him. In fact, when you look back at it, he was doing the same thing from five years old until he retired at 60. He got up every morning, went to school, played ball afterwards, and then went and watched sports after that. For 60 years he did that, and he did very well at it. Um, and he didn't have a real, real secret, especially at West Boylston. Um, his philosophy was get the ball to your best player and make sure he scores. <laughs> and he's the, the perfect example of that. And there were many others. By the way, uh, the next on the, the list for you, if anyone's nominating, is uh, I got Stevie Flynn, Dick Priestley, and Jimmy Bancroft, who should be included on, on, in your thoughts, anyways. Um, Coach Constantino mentioned his background uh, grow, um, and his experience with them. It's, it's a unique experience being Coach's uh, son, especially for my dad, who who pretty much did it 24-7. Um, I learned the, the, the baseball playbook, the rules of the baseball front to back, probably by the time I was 12. I learned that the best play on third down is a screen or a, pat, a, screen or a draw. Uh, I learned to get the ball to your best shooters and control the ball on the rebounds and you will manage to win a game. Um, all in all, I want to thank you all for my, uh, my dad's uh, the, the privilege I have for accepting from my dad, and it was an honor to, uh, to watch him in, in, his, uh, in his days as coach. And uh, there's not many that did it better. Thank you very much.
Uh, we do have the dance floor if anyone wants to get up and... Uh, <laughs> when Mr. Jake O'Connor became principal, Ron Eckblum, who was already a physical education staff member and baseball coach, stepped into the role of athletic director and guided the ongoing steady improvement of Lions athletics. His 1977 baseball team won the school's first state championship and Ron was voted into the Massachusetts High School <laughs> Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame. Ron passed a number of years ago and is dearly missed. At this time I'd like to invite up to the podium Mr. Scott Anderson. Before I get started, um, I just uh, noticed, couldn't help but notice today that uh, with the induction order uh, that we had, the order that people were being inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, that it brings me back to some of my spring afternoons back in the day at West Boylston High School. Um, baseball with Ron Eckbloom preceded by detention with Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> To the Hall of Fame committee presenters, inductees, friends, and family, it's truly an honor, truly an honor to stand up here today and present Ron Eckblum into the West Boylston High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Most of you are probably not aware that I'm actually related to Ron Eckblum. I'm his first cousin, and uh, the role model that he provided me growing up was the same one that I saw he provided to everybody else that he coached and taught. And if I thought I was to be treated any differently because I was his cousin, I was dead wrong. Uh, but to this day, whenever I meet someone for the first time involved in athletics in the Worcester area, I take great pride in declaring that Ronnie was my cousin. And if they knew him, the response is generally the same, uh, always highly complimentary, always noting the positive influence that he had on people, his influence as a teacher, as a coach, and as an athletic director. Uh, when I was very young, uh, Ronnie actually lived down the street from us, and uh, somebody gave me a Red Sox uniform. It was one of those old, wool, off-white Red Sox uniforms, stirrups and all. And uh, even back then, uh, Ronnie was like John Wayne to me. He was uh, a strong, respected leader of men, someone who was approval I highly valued. So I put the uniform on and walked down the street to see Cousin Ron. Uh, the first thing he said to me was, hey, we need to make you look like a ball player. Uh, minutes later, he returned with the thin white sanitary hose, as we called it, proceeded to show me the fine art of pulling up the socks, pulling the stirrups high, neatly folding the socks and stirrups into the flat section of the pants three inches below the knee, creating that nice crisp line. I looked like a ball player. And from that point on, from Little League to High School Legion Ball and College Ball, I remembered that. And I always made sure that I looked like a ball player. But the story, uh, to me, illustrates a few things about Ronnie. Uh, first, when it came to baseball, as in life, Ronnie was pretty black and white. There was no middle ground with Ronnie. Uh, he loved the game of baseball and had a great deal of respect for it. There was a right way and a wrong way to approach the game. He loved the purity of the game. And when you put the uniform on, any uniform, you represent, represent yourself, your teammates, your coach, your school, and yes, your family. Uh, as a baseball coach, Ronnie was an innovator. Uh, as an example, he developed a system of pickoff plays that required the equivalent of learning the New England Patriots offensive playbook. Uh, he truly had the ability to think two and three innings ahead, making moves accordingly. He stressed and practiced what would now be called situational baseball, and he could inspire whether it was on an individual basis or on a team level, he knew how to light fires. And in terms of one of his inspirations, he would take a kind of personal offense to opposing coaches or teams that he felt didn't respect the game. And I sometimes laugh to myself thinking about Ginny and Ronnie ending up in Boylston, 
uh, each year before the Tohanto game, his talk would be the same. We can win every other game this year, but I will consider this season a failure if we lose to those farmers from Boylston. <clears throat> As I think of the term Hall of Fame, I think of the listing of statistics and championships, great accomplishments and years of sustained performance. But I'm not sure if that is what should be most important or what the measure of achievement should necessarily be for a high school baseball coach. Ronnie could certainly tell you we had a state championship and maybe a few other highlights, but I'm not sure he could recite many of his statistical achievements. If he had set up to be part of some hall, I think Ronnie strived for and achieved what might be called the Hall of Impact. The impact that he had on people that he coached, the positive influence he had on how they played the game, but more importantly, the positive influence he had on their lives moving forward. Ronnie certainly understood baseball, but more importantly, he understood people. I happen to be a, a football coach at Holy Aim High School, and I like to think that his lessons have stayed with me in my interactions with my players. He taught me that your opponent cannot control how hard you work or how well you prepare, only you have the opportunity to do that. He taught me that you should ready your individual players not to act and perform in tomorrow's game only, but more importantly, how to act and perform five and 10 years down the road. He also taught me about pride and humility. His impact on his players was immediate. You always knew where you stood. Self-esteem wasn't handed out at the door as you walked in, you had to earn it. And when the, you were there to win and, and win the right way. But when you bought in, um, and most did, you would go through a wall for him. And you would do it not for yourself, but for the team, as he taught you the satisfaction of being part of something that was bigger than yourself. And things in baseball, as in life, don't always go our way. But he would say, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. Even in losing, maintain respect for yourself, your teammates, your coach, and the game. Ronnie was a man's man. Uh, he was not a man of many words, and he was a man of effective words. When, he would, when you heard him say, let me tell you something, you listened because you knew measured words of wisdom would follow. The sad reality is in today's oversensitive, overprotected, and overmanaged world, Ronnie's style probably would not fly. But the reality also is that coaches, teachers, and athletic directors like Ron Ecklum have never been more in need. We had a good size uh, gathering with Ronnie a few years back with some of the guys that uh, played during his coaching career and were at West Boylston during his AD career. The group included guys of old like Eddie Levine and Eddie Connor, more recent like John McKellum, Don Biancini, and Gary Knox, David Smiley, Mike O'Neill, Fritz Smith, Jack Patsy, on and on. Talk to any of them, all outstanding people, and you will see the impact of Ron Eklund. It's what I would call Hall of Fame impact. In my mind, there is no one more deserving of this recognition, and it is my distinct privilege and pleasure to present this honor, honor to uh, Ronnie Eklund, his wife, Ginny Eklund. First of all, congratulations to all of the inductees. I think it's wonderful that they have made this initiative to begin a Hall of Fame in West Boylston, and I look forward to many, many more people who will be inducted. And thank you to the committee who did such hard work putting this together. There were a lot of details that came into play. Rich kept me totally informed throughout the process. Ronnie loved sports. He played sports. He watched sports. He was smart enough to get himself a job where we, he participated in sports every single day. He spent his whole career in West Boylston. The faculty and coaches that he met there became lifelong friends, many of them who are here today. But most of all, he enjoyed watching young people of varying athletic ability participate in sports and grow through sports not just um, the premier athletes, but the kids in the gym class who maybe weren't going to have any future in athletics. And that's what he really, really enjoyed. He always said that the lessons that you learn in athletics are the lessons that will carry you through life and make you the person that you are. 
So on behalf of his family and myself, thank you. Before we induct the next honoree, um, Jim Valentopoulos, who was a coach at West Boylston, a basketball coach, and he was privileged to work with, you'll hear in his little letter here, some of the people that are, are, are here. He wanted me, he was here and he schmoozed like he does, like only Jimmy can do. Uh, he schmoozed before and then he had to go to the Hall of Fame presentations at Algonquin. That's why he couldn't stay here. But he asked me if I would read this letter and Rich has given permission to do so. So, Jimmy writes, to start I would like to offer my sincerest congratulations to all today's inductees. Your hard work and dedication to excellence are being recognized in such a truly meaningful event today. All of you are role models for others to emulate. Thank you for making West Boylston High School a very special place for student athletes to excel. All of you exemplify the values needed for young people to achieve great things in their lives as all of you have done in yours. I wish I could be in two places at once. To those friends and family, uh, members of Jake O'Connor, Joe Garofoli, and Ron Eckboom, I would like to extend a very special congratulations. Um, Jake, Joe, and Ron are being inducted today in the Athletic Hall of Fame and these great men have had a positive effect on my life and the lives of so many others. Uh, thank you, Jake, for giving me my first head basketball coaching job, following Joe Garofoli and you as the WB's varsity basketball coach. Coach Garofoli, who had been so successful with great teams excelling in the uh, SWCL, the Clark Tourney, and the district tournament made things easy for me with nice compliments and genuine support. I truly appreciate Joe as he was such a positive influence on me. I'm also thankful to coach Ron Eckboom for his support of me in the basketball program. He was the reason I was hired by Jake and why I wanted to coach at West Boylston. Ron was an AD that supported his staff and wasn't influenced by narrow-minded parents. Um, I always respected him and looked look to him for guidance and understanding as we together tried our best to win but most importantly, helped develop young men. I learned so much from Coach Eckboom, and I grew as a coach under his tutelage. Thanks for your help and becoming such a good friend. After leaving West Boylston in 1986, after eight good years, I continued coaching basketball, and my teams had much success as a result of the things I learned under these great men. I learned how to win the right way, how to help young men become better people as they represented themselves in their high school. So you can see, Jake, Joe, and Ron were so special to me in my growth as a teacher and a coach. They also impacted so many young people's lives. Again, congratulations on your induction, and enjoy a day in the sun, as all of you have provided a great full model for us to follow. Jim Diamantopoulos, who, by the way, is uh, Jim Diamantopoulos is uh, in the, uh, Massachusetts High School Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame. And so he certainly got some good tutelage while he was here. Okay, so with that, our next inductee from the class of 1945, Mr. Bob Bonsey, Sr. In the early to mid 1940s, Bob Bonsey, Sr. was a student athlete who stood out in basketball and baseball at Major Edwards High School and was fondly referred to in the 1945 yearbook as the star athlete of our class. He led the basketball team in scoring for three consecutive years and compiled over 500 career points. In baseball, he was a talented pitcher for the Lions. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium Bob's son, Mr. Robert Bonsey Jr.
Uh, first off, I would like to thank and congratulate Rich Riley, Mike Barkas, and the rest of the West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee on a job well done. Thank you very much. Rich Riley contacted me a few months back to see if Robert Bonsey Sr. was my dad. I told him yes and, has, and asked him what he was calling about. He told me West Boylston was starting an athletic hall of fame and my dad's name was brought up as a possible inductee. Rich went on to tell me he was going through yearbooks from the 1940s and found that my dad had a very good career as a basketball and baseball player. He also went on to say, according to his records, my dad scored over 500 points in his career at Major Edwards, long before the implementation of the three-point line. He was captain of the basketball team his junior year and co-captain his senior year. At this point, I said to myself, are we talking about the same guy? <laughs> my father never mentioned to me or my brother any basketball accolades. I can remember the day he put up our first basketball hoop in the driveway. He was shooting around with me and Tommy and telling us to shoot the ball from up here. Don't shoot it from your hip, it's going to get blocked most of the time. God knows he had plenty of opportunities over the years to boast about himself, but that was just not him. When my brother and I were in high school in the early 70s, we had some pretty good basketball teams in Clinton and we qualified and played in several Clark basketball tournaments. It was big news in Clinton back then because they hadn't been in a Clark tournament since the early 1950s. After doing a lot of research on my father through yearbooks in the Worcester Telegram and Gazette archives, I found out that Major Edwards played in the Clark tournament his junior and senior years. In fact, his junior year in 1944 they beat a highly favored Oxford team 25 to 17 in the first round. The next day, the headline for the article in the Telegram, because that sports section read, Bonsey leads way for West Boylston. He scored 13 of the team's 25 points. Not bad. Never did he mention that he played in the Clark tournament or that he was a big factor in several of his team's victories. That just wasn't my dad. He has always been low-key, humble, and unassuming. His baseball career was cut a little short in high school. He played three years, but unlike nowadays, when high school practices start the third Monday in March inside, back then, they waited until Mother Nature gave way. So a lot of games were not played and practices were few. In his senior year, they played only a handful of games, and my father and his good friend, Buddy Bellis, headed off to join the Navy at the end of April. Due to being away, he was not able to attend his high school graduation, so my grandfather picked up his diploma at the graduation. In his later years, Bob watched his grandchildren, Jillian, Jeffrey, Matthew, and Kara play. He never gave advice or criticized, just showed his support. I have coached basketball for over 40 years, most recently as JV coach at Clinton High School. I don't think he's missed home JV game now the last 10 years. Dad, we're so proud of your accomplishments in service to our country. On behalf of all your family, congratulations to you on being inducted into the inaugural class of the West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame.
from the class of 1965, Mr. John Bancroft. As West Boylston Athletics progressed into the 1960s, a student athlete stood out in basketball, Mr. John Bancroft. John became West Boylston's first 1,000 point scorer, compiling over 1,300 career points, played a key role in West Boylston's 1965 clock tournament championship in advancement to the state championship game at Boston Garden coached by Mr. Joe Garofoli. John played for coach Paige Roden at Lester Junior College and graduated from Clark University earning a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium John's daughter, Miss Jessica Bancroft. So I didn't know my dad when he was playing baseball, so I, he didn't play baseball, he played basketball. <laughs> I didn't know him when he was playing basketball, so I'm going to talk about what he meant to me with basketball. My dad taught me how to play basketball at a very young age. We had not one but two basketball hoops at our house and would play outside, learning how to dribble, shoot, and play defense. We probably played a million games of pig, horse, and around the world, starting when I could barely throw the ball up until high school. My dad even attempted to teach my brother and I his hook shot, although I can't tell you either one of us quite managed to actually hit the backboard with the hook shot, never mind get it in the hoop. Starting in fourth grade, I played basketball for the elementary basketball team. My dad was my coach all through elementary school. He taught a bunch of nine and 10 year old kids who could barely dribble the rules of the game, how to shoot, and how to play as a team. He taught us to love the game. My dad was a part of my basketball career all the way through high school. He may not have been my middle school and high school coach, but he always coached the summer league teams and came to practice and games to help out when he could. He didn't care if we won, he just cared that we played as a team and loved the game. And thank goodness for that, because we were not very good. We played against Kelly, their team, well, they beat us every time. <laughs> when I heard he was one of the nine people being inducted into the West Boylston Hall of Fame, I was not surprised. Growing up, I was always so proud that my dad was a huge basketball star. The fact that he was the first basketball player at West Boylston High School to score over 1,000 points was amazing to me. The fact that he scored over 1,300 points in his four-year high school career was even more amazing. And that he did all of this before the three-point line was used in high school basketball was incredible. Even with all of these accomplishments to be proud of, my dad never talked about himself. I knew about all of these things from my mother, from reading his high school yearbooks, and from growing up in a community of people who knew him as a high school basketball star. My dad never talked about himself, and although he's proud to be here today, he's a little mortified at all this attention. In fact, he asked me if we could go home when we went in the hallway earlier. <laughs> Even though he would never share his own stats with anyone, I sure loved to share them growing up. I told all my friends about his accomplishments and was so proud that he was my dad. I still am. Unfortunately, none of his skills got passed along to me. Mm -hmm. No matter how many hours I practiced with dad in the driveway, I was lucky if I scored more than two points in a game. But I never cared because my dad taught me to love the game, whether I scored or not, won or lost. I cared a little. It would have been nice to score a few points here and there. Although we are honoring him today because my dad is one of the best basketball players West Boylston has ever had, he is much more than that. He's the best dad my brother and I could ever have asked for. He's a wonderful husband, grandfather, son, son-in-law, uncle, boss, and friend. He would do anything for anyone. He makes everyone around him laugh, and he's the hardest worker I know. I'm proud to call him my dad. So here he is. Congratulations, dad. and you know the way you should speak or wet your pants. <laughs> I'm honored and blessed to be here and the experiences that we had in high school and be before high school were just beyond comprehension. 
in high school, what I did was I was forced to make a big decision. And I had to make a decision between sports and academics. And you guess who lost? <laughs> but we had a lot, a lot of fun. We had some great teammates, of which two of the gentlemen are here today. They'd stand up, David Limberg and Bobby Benedict, my teammates. If it wasn't for them and the other group of boys and guys that supported us, I wouldn't be here today. But it all started back when we formed a church basketball team. We were 10 or 12 years old, and there was four of us in the group. There was Bobby, David, myself, Bruce Fisher, a few others. We started to go back and forth to the Norton Fieldhouse. Hank Hiller headed up the whole team. He put us in the back of his Jeep, and he used to take us back and forth to the Norton Fieldhouse. Weekend after weekend after weekend. We had no idea that this team would develop into what they developed into. We were really blessed when we started to reach the high school level. Mr. Garofoli was a phenomenal coach, and I'll never, ever, ever forget him. But beyond that, Mr. Eckblom. Mr. Eckblom, although he was a great baseball coach and player, he used to take us in the gym. And he used to beat the living you-know-what out of us <laughs> to get us into shape. And if it wasn't for all of his efforts, I don't think that we would have been where we are today, or 50 years ago. <laughs> because half the things 50 years ago, I have basically forgotten. <laughs> so we did reach a lot of goals, and we did make a lot of friends. And uh, the, uh, the family attachments, and everybody that's here today is just beyond my comprehension. I just, I just can't believe that everybody came today in honor of this whole total group of fine athletes. I thank my mother who is in attendance, all my relatives are here, my wife, everybody that is here. And I also want to thank the committee. If it wasn't for Rich and his committee, I don't think this would have ever come about. And also, I'd like to thank all of my classmates who are here today from the class of 65. They've all made it all happen for me. So again, I'm beyond words, and I didn't pee my pants. <laughs> inductee from the class of 1971, Mr. Ken Bolin. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, as basketball continued to find success under the guidance of coach Joe Garofoli, a young man emerged onto the scene and played a major role in WB's 1969 and 1970 Clark University Tournament Champions. Mr. Ken Bolin was WB's second boys 1,000 point scorer, a two-time Telegram and Gazette All-Star, and today in 2015 remains as the fifth highest all-time leading scorer in Clark University Small Schools tournament history. Ken was also a gifted student and upon graduation attended Ivy League Dartmouth College and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium Ken's mother, Ms. Evelyn Bowen.
Alrighty. Well, my name is Evelyn Bowen, and I've been a resident of West Boylston for 64 years. And I'd like to thank the West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee for honoring these fine individuals who have made West Boylston proud. And we have, haven't we? <laughs> My son, Ken Boland, played all sports growing up, not just basketball. He played five years of Little League Baseball and was quarterback for Bernie McKernan's Pop Warner football team. He started playing organized basketball in a church league at the Greendale YMCA when he was about 12 and it quickly became his passion. Ken began his West Boylston basketball career playing for Coach Joyce in junior high, then JV coach Art Eckblum as a freshman, and finally, varsity coach Garofoli for his sophomore through senior years. His West Boylston High School teams had a combined record of 59 wins and 24 losses. Two of his high school teams won Clark Tournament Championships. Ken's teams won eight games lost only once, and his total points of 199 still ranks fifth all time in Clark tournament history. His senior year team qualified for the Massachusetts State District Three tournament and made it to the semifinal round. Ken scored 1,162 points at West Boylston High School and had 843 rebounds. During his senior season, he averaged 21.7 points per game and 17 rebounds per game. Bless those rebounds. <laughs> he had single game highs of 39 points and 28 rebounds. Ken went on to play basketball at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire in the NCAA Division I basketball program. He graduated from Dartmouth with a bachelor's degree in economics. He was a member of the Kappa Sigma fraternity and Sphinx Senior Society. Ken had a long and impressive professional career in business, more than 30 years of it with London-based Informa PLC. He was president and CEO of Informa USA, which he launched. He built it to a market value of more than a million dollars before his retirement in 2014. But what makes him most proud is that he has raised three successful, good kids of his own, sons Keith and Ryan and daughter Lisa. We have such fond memories of those years that Ken played basketball. His dad never missed a game. After hearing all this, you can imagine why I am such a proud mother. At this time, I'd like to present my son, Ken Bolin.
Well, the music's quieted down a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Cheaters or not. Thanks, Mom. That was great. She is really something, isn't she? 90 years young next month. <laughs> my, uh, my secret to getting all my family here today was to have her present. So <laughs> Okay, um, so I have a few thank yous. Uh, first, I'd also like to thank the committee for initiating uh, the West Boylston Middle High School Athletic Hall of Fame, which uh, I'm sure will live on and on, and uh, I think it's a great initiative, so thank you to each of them or all of them for doing that. Um, I'd also like to thank a lot of Rich, who I, I can't believe, I, I wish I'd hired him 30 years ago because he managed this process incredibly well. So thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to emphasize, which John kind of did, um, that basketball is in fact a team game. And I wouldn't be here, nor would any of us, I suppose, were it not for my teammates. Um, who were great, and also our cheerleaders, and we had the best cheerleaders in all of Central Massachusetts. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. Um, great event uh, put on by uh, the committee specifically. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for your support of West Wilson Athletics. And of course, special thanks to my family and friends for coming, not only for coming on today, but for supporting me for all these, for all these years. Um, I'd also like to congratulate all of the other inductees. I'm sure each of you holds your years of West Wilson Athletics as near and dear as I do. Um, I have just a few individual comments or stories about uh, a few of my, or some of my other fellow inductees that I'd like to share. Um, first, I owe John Bancroft a special nod and thank you. Uh, because he and his teams in the mid-1960s were such an inspiration to me. I remember being a wide-eyed fifth or sixth grader watching my first high school basketball game with John and Dave Lindbergh, who, by the way, is on the top of my uh, list for future nominees, um, and all of the others on those great teams, and thinking, I want to do that. Um, None of the uh, younger inductees here uh, today was born when I played, uh, but I do hope I had the same positive influence on some of the kids who followed me. Uh, next, I'm pretty sure every one of us who played West Boylston sports from the 60s through the 80s thought, Jake thought of Jake O'Connor as the dean of West Boylston athletics. There wasn't a game I played in or watched when Jake wasn't present and in full control usually standing right by the double doors underneath the scoreboard, making sure nobody did anything wrong and nobody got in or out. So he, was, he was always there and uh, ran a great show. Uh, Mom and I had the pleasure of having dinner with Jake a couple of years ago at Briarwood, and uh, it was great to see him then, and it's great to see him today, and I'm happy to be able to offer him my personal congratulations, because he was... He was, great, uh, he was a great administrator for us and great AD for me personally. Uh, I'm sorry Ron Eklum isn't here with us today, but it's great to have um, his wife and my favorite babysitter, Ginny, there. <laughs> Ginny, uh, Ginny babysat me and my brother and sisters when I was about that big, so uh, great to see her again. Um, Coach Eklum taught me more about basketball and I know he was a baseball guy, and I know most of his accolades are, are baseball, but he taught me more about basketball in my one JV year than anyone else before or after that. I had however many rebounds I had, 800 and some odd or whatever it was, over the next three seasons, but I'm sure it would have been some small fraction of that if Coach Eklund hadn't taught me about positioning, leverage, and anticipation. He drilled us relentlessly on the fundamentals of the game, and he sure did have a knack for keeping our attention. In fact, he was the only coach to ever throw me out of a practice. <laughs> I was running back on defense one day, well, jogging back on defense one day. Ball hits me on the back of the head. Coach Eklund, Bowen, you're out, hit the showers. 
Um, I don't know if others remember this, but his favorite drill was teaching us how to take offensive fouls with him as the ball handler. <laughs> and anybody, who, anybody who's played basketball understands what I'm talking about. Yes, Coach Eckbloom was the guy who toughened us all up, that's for sure. I'm also really sorry I couldn't reunite with Joe Garofoli today, who was a super guy and a great coach. And he never threw me out of any practices. <laughs> we won a lot of games together and a few tournaments along the way. Joe was not only my uh, varsity coach for three years, but he was also involved in my college recruitment process. So we were together on several of my recruiting trips and we got to know each other very well. And one vivid memory I still have was on a visit to the University of Connecticut in stores, where I and Joe were guests at UConn head coach D. Rowe. Our seats were directly behind the UConn bench, so the very next row. And we watched Julius Irving, who some of you will remember as NBA legend Dr. J, score 35 that night and make an incredible block with seconds to go to preserve the win for UMass. Of course, Joe and I were supposed to be rooting for UConn. So we just looked at each other with our mouths wide open, get wide open, and uh, it, was, it was a great night. I'll never forget it. Last time I saw Joe was about 15 years ago uh, at a game at Clinton High School. They were honoring that uh, team um, that Connie mentioned earlier, um, which was their 71 team. I think it was their 30th anniversary of the 71 team, which won their league title and qualified for the districts. And so they had asked me, the Clinton folks had asked me and Joe to attend. And Joe, of course, had lived in Clinton and coached football all those years up there. And I played uh, against John um, both in high school and also when he was at UMass and I was at Dartmouth. So they wanted us to participate and they marched us out uh, to midcourt at halftime. And they played this really cool video up on the wall and gave us a big round of applause. But the funny thing was, to Joe and I, was we weren't sure if they realized that we were the ones that actually knocked him out of the tournament that year. <laughs> <clears throat> People have asked me about my uh, basketball career after high school. Um, I played just one year at Dartmouth, but I did have 30 in my first game and also had the satisfaction that year of beating, among, among others, Harvard twice, Boston College, and the Holy Cross, who, by the way, had never recruited me. But I was the classic tweener. I was a 6'2 white guy, and no matter how high I could jump, and I, and I could jump high, Mr. Perry. <laughs> I couldn't shoot that well, but I could jump. No matter how high I could jump or how good a shooter I was, I just wasn't tall enough to handle college big men, nor quick enough to defend a guard. Not at a Division I program, anyway. And then George Blaney, who recruited me to go up there, left after my freshman year to become head coach at, of all places, Holy Cross. But I gave, it, I gave it a shot, and I have absolutely no regrets. I had a great experience at Dartmouth, earned an Ivy League degree, and never really looked back. So my playing days at West Boylston High School were obviously the highlight of my athletic career, and I remember it like it all happened just yesterday. Those were in many ways my formative years, and whatever I've accomplished since, in, not in sports, but in life, has been due in significant part to my time spent as a West Boylston athlete. My only wish is that I had appreciated the importance of it all then as much as I do now. And that's my only advice to uh, you young student athletes who walked us in. <clears throat> Don't take any of it for granted. Treasure every minute of every game, every practice, every off-season workout. And oh yeah, study as hard as you play. Thank you all very much.
from the class of 1989, Miss Lisa Hofsepian. Lisa Hofsepian was a three-sport student athlete at West Boylston in the mid to late 1980s, earning 13 varsity letters. She played goalie and fullback for the boys' soccer team. Was West Boylston's first girls 1,000 point scorer in basketball and was a Telegram and Gazette and League All-Star. She also played four years of varsity softball as a shortstop. Being an accomplished student, she matriculated to Ivy League Yale University. As a sophomore, she led the Division I Bulldogs basketball team in rebounding and earned the most improved player award. And if I remember reading about that, I still believe she had 213 rebounds, is still the fifth time all, uh, all time uh, amount of rebounds in a one season for a Yale Bulldogs uh, uh, girls basketball player, women's basketball player. Lisa graduated from Yale with a degree in graphic design. At this time, I'd like to invite up to the podium, Mr. Ken Powers. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just want to echo uh, a lot of the people that have uh, stood up here before me. Uh, I think this is a fantastic honor for the inductees and a fantastic thing for the West Boylston community to uh, do. Um, it certainly, in all the years that I worked at the Telegram, I, West Boylston Athletics was always a very rich uh, tradition uh, school with a lot of great athletes and a lot of successful teams and was always uh, in most sports a team that had come district tournament time they were always in the mix so I think it's great that that, that uh, Rich uh, undertook this project and um, it, it's just been a great afternoon and I, I'm honored to be a part of it um, I will say uh, I'm going to stray just for a minute from the uh, political correctness part of the program and, uh, you know, when I think of Lisa Hosepian, two phrases come to mind always for me. She rebounds like an animal, and she plays like a boy. <laughs> and they're phrases, no disrespect intended, that I used uh, when I worked at the Telegram. I was lucky enough to cover her um, in the West Boylston Lions uh, for years. And um, I, I have covered hundreds, maybe thousands of athletes and I have never seen a tougher competitor than Lisa Hosepian. Um, and, I, and I think I was lucky to be able to come along at a time when I got to see her play. On rebounding like an animal, in the, in the heat of battle, and those here who played with her or watched her play will remember, Lisa would get this look on her face and she would get this stare in her eye. Mary Galena probably knows it better than everybody here. Um, it, it was kind of an indication to her opponents, although they didn't really know it at the time, but they learned it pretty quick, that um, they really needed to get out of the way if she was going after a rebound because she would not be responsible for the harm that she may do to you to get that basketball. And, uh, and like I said, in, in the first quarter of the first half, there was a lot of jostling and there was a lot of uh, physical activity under the boards when Lisa was rebounding. And I noticed in the second half, in the fourth quarter, people, the girls on the other team were kind of getting out of her way. You know, the rebounding seemed a little easier for her in the second half. And, uh, and I just think it's because she wouldn't be denied. You know, on playing like a boy, uh, it was, it, you know, when I worked at the Telegram, and uh, it was, a, it, I meant it as a compliment, 
And, and what I meant when I, when I wrote it and what I have said, when I've said it about athletes, um, is it was to, to explain her gift of body control. And, and all the great athletes have it, female athletes have it. Mia Hamm in soccer, Cheryl Miller and Carla Berube in basketball, the Williams sisters in tennis, Lisa Fernandez, Jenny Finch in softball, they all have it. And, and, I, and I noticed that with Lisa too. She could, um, she could slide in midair between defenders and um, it, was just a, it was just a trait that you didn't see in a lot of female athletes in the day. And it uh, just really got my attention. So it, it, it's, it's something I, I always want to clarify and let people know I mean it as in, in the highest compliment possible. Um, with Lisa, a lot of you know, no game was over, whether her team was ahead or behind, until the final horn sounded, the final whistle blew, or the final out was recorded. On many occasions, she, she snatched victory from the jaws of defeat with a clutch save in soccer, a buzzer-beating jumper in basketball, and a game-winning home run in the seventh inning with two outs in softball. And Lisa's accomplishments were not limited to the athletic arena. She was an excellent student as well. All the schools that were recruiting her athleti athletically were recruiting her academically as well. And uh, she excelled, as, as Rich mentioned, in soccer, in basketball, and in softball. And as my former colleague, Nick Manzella, would have said proudly, a three-sport brilliant. That's how he would have described her in Sports Street. Um, her concern for others, Lisa's concern for others, whether it be a teammate, a coach, or a friend, is just part of what makes Lisa special. Um, and to me, very worthy of the honor she's receiving today. She was, she was never concerned about scoring 20 points or having 15 saves in softball or hitting a three-run homer to put her team ahead. She was worried, um, and she made it clear, if you're going to keep score, she wants to win. And, and she was a competitor. And um, West Wilson won a lot um, when she was there. She won a lot, and they won a lot. Um, more than they lost some games that they probably had no business winning. And, um, you know, I, uh, I just always marvel at, uh, at her intensity, her competitiveness, and her passion for whatever sport she was playing. And uh, that's enough out of me, so with no further ado, I present to you Wes Boylson's athlete in the 1980s, and she may have been number 42 in the basketball program, but she'll always be number one in our hearts, Miss Lisa Hosepian. so many people attend this inaugural Athletic Hall of Fame induction and uh, I'd like to thank the committee for putting on an amazing event and choosing some of the great athletes that have come through our small school. Um, seems like for a school of our size we had exceptional athletic teams and uh, I know my teams quite often went to districts and uh, at least won the Southern Worcester County League. Unfortunately, my teams didn't usually get past the first round of the districts, but um, you know we always made a good show. And um, I'd like to thank my mom for driving me to a zillion practices from, uh, West well, Boylston kind of nurtures the, the young ones, so from Lassie League to uh, let's see, the, the soccer feeder programs to all-star games like uh, Junior Olympics and Bay State Games. I think she was a full-time chauffeur for much of my high school years, until they finally got smart and bought us a car. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a um, couple of comments on uh, some of the inductees. Remember Mr. Eckbloom? Uh, advised me that I should be careful not to lift weights too much because muscles are unattractive on women. 
I didn't listen to him. <laughs> um, and then we had some other uh, older men that were my coaches, such as Dick Priestley and Joe Garfoli, and they had a different philosophy about women athletes. Uh, Dick Priestley wanted me to be the punter for the guys' football team. <laughs> I declined because I was already the goalie for the boys' soccer team, <laughs> and uh, soccer guys were a little more my thing than the than the football guys at the time. And uh, Joe Garfoli was my French teacher, and uh, so I didn't know that he was bad at French, but um, <laughs> he had a thing where he taught us how to you know do the French pronunciation that I still remember about him, which is tootle toot toot. <laughs> He repeated it like 700 times in class, and so we'd all say it together, toodle toot toot toot. And uh, I don't know why, that was his thing. And, uh, but he was great. I started softball in eighth grade uh, in the hot spot, third base, and we went to districts that year, and then uh, I played shortstop the rest of my uh, softball career. Um, but basketball was more my, uh, my pet game. Um, so uh, we had great teams um, in West Boylston. My senior year, we had this young whippersnapper named Mary Galena that uh, took the point guard position for me because I played everything from point guard to center. So it was nice to be a big guy and let someone else bring the ball up. And um, I think you have a little story that I'll let you tell about. Uh, <laughs> Um, I got to coach Mary one year too, which was pretty phenomenal. Um, I went off to Yale, which uh, I played basketball there. They really didn't recruit me much. Um, they came to one game and I was terrible. And, um, but Yale had the best art program and um, even though Brown wanted me to go there, they were very encouraging, they'll start here you can go to RISD for your art classes, but I, I didn't, well, I wanted to go to the same place, I didn't want to go to another school um, for art. Yale had the best art program, and it just so happened that both my grandfathers went to Yale and my twin brother decided to go to Yale, so off to Yale I went. And um, I, I, the, the first coach who didn't recruit me didn't like me. <laughs> and I didn't really like her, she made me a point guard, which was not good. Um, <laughs> Because in high school, I could just be faster and get away with being a bad ball handler. But in college, I'd be dribbling, and the little five foot four point guard would just steal the ball, and I'd end up running back over and over again as she took a layup after she stole my dribbles. So I played three minutes the whole year my freshman year. It was quite sad. But I decided I am not going to quit because that's, it was a matter of pride at that point. And then luckily, we've got a new coach for her sophomore year, C. DeMarco, and um, she loved me, so she made me a power forward, which is what I am. Um, I wasn't super tall, as uh, Ken, <laughs> as Mr. Boyle has, has pointed out, but um, I was stronger than the other guys, so I would just box out really, really well <laughs> and make them reach out over on top of me. And, and I was rather Dennis Rodman-like in terms of you were going to get hurt if there was a ball. <laughs> and, and it was worth a couple of flower, you know, flowers in the beginning to establish the pattern, you know. So, uh, yeah. Um, so my sophomore year, I played 34 minutes a game, and I think one of my first games I had 17 rebounds. And I did remember Mr. Garfoli's uh, code of the people, you know, the team who has the most rebounds wins. And um, rebounding and defense were always my thing. So um, unfortunately, I didn't get to finish four years of school, well, of, of college ball, like, because um, I had some medical issues come up. Uh, I was in a very serious fire in 1993. And um, I do feel like the lessons of athletics helped me survive that. Um, the perseverance, the ability to play through pain, the uh, the um, tenacity, um, really, I, and the conditioning I was in, I feel it really saved my life. So I'm um, very grateful for having the um, opportunity to have grown up 
It's such an amazing town. Uh, I know when I came into town a few years back, there was I drove by Steve's Pizza, and there was a sign there that said, West Boylston, small town, big heart. And uh, I really believe that. So um, I thank you all for coming, and I'm very honored to have this recognition. So thank you, Rich. Thanks, everybody. next inductee. I was a little nervous because Rich had sent me the script and told me that I had to practice it, which I did. Uh, but when I was sharing it with somebody, they, they told me that our next inductee, uh, Meredith Galena, is not Mary. She goes by Meredith. I go, oh my God, it says here Mary. Then I looked over at the, uh, all the uh, articles and it said Mary. I said, well, so what is it? So when I saw her come in, I asked her. And she said, when I was in West Point, and everybody knew me as Mary. But it's Meredith now. But, <laughs> but since this is for your high school career, Meredith, we're going to go with Mary. How's that? <laughs> All right. Meredith, call me Mary. Galena earned nine varsity letters in basketball and softball. In basketball, she was the first eighth grader to play in the varsity, was the second girl's thousand point scorer, finishing her career as the all-time leading scorer at that time with 1,199 points. She led the Dick Priestley Coach Lions to back-to-back -back District E Division III championships in 1992 and 1993. She was a two-time Telegram and Gazette and three-time Southern Worcester County League All-Star. In softball, she was shortstop for the 1991 Joe Garra Foley Coach District E Championship team. Being an exceptional student, she enrolled at Northeast 10 Conference, St. Anselm College, receiving a scholarship where she played four years of basketball, was voted a Kodak All-American, and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium Ms. Christina Bebus. to be here today when two of my coaches and my best friend are being inducted into the Hall of Fame. My athletic experience here at West Boylston wouldn't have been so amazing without any of any one of them. So to Mr. Garfoli, who we lovingly call G-Man, and to Mr. Eckbloom, thank you so much. I was inspired to look through my high school memorabilia last week after talking to Mary about this event. I was flooded with that overwhelmingly deep and blissful nostalgic feeling that one gets when doing such things. And I realized what an extraordinary high school athletic experience we all had here at West Boylston. We had extraordinary coaches, teammates, schools, teachers, and an extraordinary town to support us. I, all know, I also know that I played with an extraordinary person and athlete, Mary Galena. I started to think back about Mary as an athlete and what made her so amazing and how she was and is. And what came to mind was her determination her toughness, and her love of basketball. There was a summer in high school when Mary broke her right wrist, a debilitating injury for most bas basketball players for sure, but Mary saw it as an opportunity to get better. She played basketball all summer using only her left hand in order to improve her left-handed shot and her ball handling skills. It definitely worked because we won one of our district championships on a Mary Galena left-handed jump shot at the last, se last second. And that's just one example of her determination. 
Mary also brought a true sense of team, dedication, and leadership to all the teams who were on to get together. She was and is so good at basketball and at just about any sport that she tries, but you would never know it in her attitude or in the way in which she carries herself. But um, I oft often also brag about how good Mary is to just about everybody. I used to brag endlessly to the women's basketball team at Stonehill College when I went there and when I was the manager of the women's basketball team. I would spend um, the entire bus ride to St. A's talking about how the greatest player ever was going to shoot over them, was going to dribble by them, and gen generally kick their butts to the Stonehill basketball team. Um, and Mary was so good that she would back up all of my predictions. In fact, one game, she scored a last second three-point shot to beat Stonehill while we were at St. A's. And I was sitting on the Stonehill bench, and I still jumped up and cheered <laughs> because I just couldn't help myself. I didn't even go into the locker room after the game, and the entire bus ride home was really long, uh, but I was secretly smiling the whole way. Mary's a great person and athlete, and someone I've been lucky enough to call my friend for the majority of my life. She pushes me and, and makes me better, and she did that for all of her teammates. Our high school basketball team was an awesome team, but Mary, without you, we never would have had the experience we had. We all know that, and we thank you for that. So without further ado, my best friend, and my, in my mind, the greatest basketball player ever, Mary Galena. <laughs> And actually, we have um, one more little thing, a little presentation with some of our teammates from back in the day. Corey Howland, Heidi used to be Kelly Daniels, <laughs> and Melissa Richards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so honored to have been a teammate of yours, Mary, in basketball and softball, and to be part of your special day. The Lady Lions of 92 and 93 were such a tight-knit family of athletes who accomplished great things. We had quite the uh, banner seasons. But on behalf of all of your teammates and fans, and in recognition of your amazing contributions to the girls' basketball team, Melissa, Heidi, Christina, and I would like to present the heart and soul of our basketball program. Uh, with the district championship banners. presenter. She's been my friend for I think over 33 years and that's something pretty special uh, that you get to experience when you grow up in a small town. Thanks to Rich Riley, the committee, um, he did such a thorough job with this. He met with us multiple times. It couldn't have um, been any more smooth so we're really appreciative of what you did Rich. Thanks to my family and my friends, my husband's family, and if I don't mention my nieces by name I will get in trouble. Caitlin and Elise. Uh, my nieces, uh, my friends, I have par friends' parents who are here. Uh, you've all played some part in my athletic career, and I can't thank you enough, all of you, for being here. I do want to take a minute to talk about my family, especially my parents. I had the best sports parents growing up, and I know that now because I'm watching youth sports, and I see what some parents say and how they act on the sideline. Um, my parents never criticized me. They never, cri never critical of my teammates never said anything negative about my coaches or the officials. They just loved watching me play. And they loved watching my teams play. Um, and like I said, now that I'm attending these games, I know how true this is. Um, excuse me, my dad knew the game of basketball, so we could talk strategy. He'd ask me a lot of questions after games. Um, he'd ask me a lot of questions before games. And uh, 
and if you know him, you know he's a big storyteller and a big talker. So, but I, I didn't know that he actually, he had a premonition one day because it was the day of our championship game my senior year and uh, he brought me to school, dropped me off for, uh, to, to get the bus for the game. And he was asking me lots of questions on the way, lots of what if questions. Well, what are you going to do if Claudia gets in foul trouble? And, well, Melissa, Melissa Richards can probably, you know, she'll pick up the slack. Well, what are you going to do if someone gets kind of rough with you? And I said, Melissa Richards would probably step in and pick up the slack. But, um, you know, and then he said, well, what are you going to do if the game's tied and you need a bucket down the end? And, you know, what do you think, what do you think Mr. Priestley's going to do? I said, well, he usually knows what he's doing, but, but if that happens, I'll probably say, just give me the ball and get the hell out of the way. And that was a big deal for me because I never swore in high school. And I especially wouldn't swear in front of my parents. But, uh, you know, people often thought I was a shy kid in the classroom, and I was. Uh, but on the basketball court, I had a lot of confidence, and um, and I and I played with some uh, some great teammates who made that easier. My mom, though, she did not know basketball very well. But again, it couldn't have worked out better for me. Uh, she didn't always know what the officials' calls meant, uh, but she knew that when my team scored, it was a good thing, and she enjoyed watching me play. And I'll never forget it was my junior or senior year of college at St. Anselm, and. Um, you know, here the intensity is super high, and every game is a big game when you're playing in the NE10. Wow, they're having fun. Um, and every game's a big game in the NE10. And um, so after the game, I, you know, I think we had won, and, and uh, I'm, I'm visiting with them afterwards and talking about the game, and she says, you know, honey, watching you is like watching a ballerina on the stage. And I was like, really? I mean... <laughs> Here I am, I, you know, I'm having a great year, and this is, this is the compliment I get. But she explained herself a little bit. She said I was very smooth and graceful on the court, and I had been described as a very smooth player on the court. So even though I, I thought in the moment that it was a very weird comparison, um, I realize now what an unbelievable compliment that was coming from her, someone who had an interest in ballet, and someone who knew that ballerinas are strong, they're powerful, they're athletic, and they're beautiful. And I, you know, it took me a while, but I realized it was really the highest compliment that she could have given me. Uh, my brother, like I said, his wife, Avita, and his kids are here. Um, I always said he was my biggest fan. And the one story that sort of epitomizes that was after we had won our championship my junior year. That was the first championship in the history of the school. We had lots of fans. We had lots of townspeople there. And after the game, the crowd rushed the court. And so finally it clears. And, and the presentations are made. But before that, my brother grabs me in a headlock and drags me over to the Sutton bench. And in front of the bench, I was probably only four or five feet away from the coaches. He starts yelling, she's the greatest player you've ever seen. You're never going to beat her as long as she's out with Spoilston. I mean, it, it just, it really does epitomize how his enthusiasm for me, his enthusiasm for my teams and, and watching us play. So that was a, a fun moment. As far as high school, you know, some people say they hated high school and they would never want to relive it. I'd redo it in a second. I loved my time at West Boylston High School. And a big reason for that was the friends I made and my experience playing sports. And fortunately, playing for a small school, those two things overlap in almost every sport. So in addition to winning championships and setting records, which was great, I could be pretty silly with my friends at practice. And that drove Mr. Priestley a little bit crazy sometimes because um, just one quick story, we were at practice one day and Mr. Priestley was trying to teach us the importance of using the shot clock. You know, especially if we were winning, you want to use the shot clock. So we're running our plays at practice and the shot clock is winding down. Well, he blows the whistle and stops and he starts correcting us. So the clock still runs and I'm watching and I'm watching and I'm listening to him a little bit, but I'm watching and all of a sudden it gets down to about three seconds and I yell, hit the deck. I yell, hit the deck, and I lay down on the floor. I mean, like, spread eagle, flat on the floor, face down, and nobody moves. The gym is silent for a second, and everyone is looking around like, what is she doing? And in that moment, you know, three seconds is a long time. So finally, the buzzer sounds. Everybody starts laughing, of course. You know, all my friends, the teammates, everyone starts laughing. And Mr. Priestley does his usual stance, you know, hand on the hip, and just shakes his head. Um, he rarely got mad at us. Uh, but we were, we were fortunate to play for him, and uh, he, he had a great attitude dealing with a bunch of uh, high school girls, I'll say that.
But uh, lastly, the biggest reason why this day is so special to me is because of the connections that I've made over my life that really started in West Boylston and started with my athletic career. Because I was good enough to play varsity as an eighth grader, I got to play with Lisa Hosepian. Um, and Lisa was one of the few seniors who was nice to me as a little eighth grader who was stealing playing time from the other upperclassmen. And she was probably nice to me because she knew all I was going to do was pass her the ball. I really had no other role. Bring it up, pass it to Lisa. I knew my role. Um, so that was, that was a great experience, but because I played with Lisa, I was seen by the St. Anselm coach who was recruiting Lisa at that time. So the St. A's coach kept her eye on me, she recruited me, and then ultimately offered me a scholarship. Because I played for Joe Garfoli, also being inducted, I won a softball championship, and I learned how important it was for good players in basketball to make free throws, and that I should want to be the person who's shooting the free throws when the game is at the, on the line. And ultimately, you know, I won a lot, we won some games in high school, and I won some games in college, and ultimately I became a national free throw champion, um, thanks to Joe. So for two years in a row, my team won the Central Mass Championship, and the plaque that was handed to me both times was handed to me by Mr. Jake O'Connor, who holds a special place in my heart for that reason alone. Uh, because I had a standout career at St. A's, I played in the NCAA tournament, I played in the Sweet 16, we had, I had some excellent coaches, so I was well suited to coach myself. And it was a West Boylston classmate of mine, who I graduated with, who introduced me and connected me to the Worcester State head coach. So because I met the Worcester State head coach, I now have a lifelong friend in Karen Tesmer. And coincidentally, Karen coached at Dartmouth, and she coached against Lisa Hosepian. And she was also taking a break from her Division I coaching experience in 1993, and she was the assistant coach at Bromfield. And that was the year we beat Bromfield in the championship. And there she is on the bench, not happy that I just hit the left-handed runner to win the game. Um, so because Karen and I became close friends, I get to be the godmother to her daughter, Lily, who was an absolute love and light in my life. And because I got into college coaching, I get I realized I wanted to work on a college campus full-time, so I took a job at another college in Worcester where I met probably the greatest man ever, my husband. Uh, and what did we talk about? We talked about basketball, because he is a basketball referee. So you can imagine we have some great talks in our house when I talk about the coaching and criticize the referees, and he sticks up for them. <laughs> Because I met my husband, I now get to be a stepmom to two great girls, Emmett and Lucy, and I get to watch them and help them grow, and I now have wonderful in-laws, and I can say I have two great nephews, too. So once my husband and I got together, we moved back to town, and now I get to give back to West Boylston in different ways. And that brings me to today and the special group of people that I get to be inducted with. So just in closing, uh, I received a card from a high school a teacher of mine when I graduated, and I just want to read part of it because it sort of explains how I hope my high school career is remembered. Uh, she wrote, you, you know how skilled you are at the sport, but I don't know if you are aware of how much excitement you generate for the pleasure of your fans. In all my years of teaching and attending West Boylston High School games, I have never come across such a consummate leader who does it so quietly. It will be many years that people will discuss the clutch shots and fine games you've had. But I will remember your ultimate team spirit at all times. Congrats on such a successful career and the modest way you have handled the success. I can only hope that all the young players coming up who admire you so well develop your sense of team spirit and a little bit of that quiet, merry integrity. So I hope that is um, how people think of my high school career as a team player and a humble person. And uh, again, thank you all for being
From the class of 2001, Miss Kelly Ambrose. <laughs> Kelly Ambrose earned 11 varsity letters participating in soccer, basketball, and track and field. In soccer, she was a three-time All-State selection and two-time Telegram and Gazette and League All-Star. In basketball, she was the third girls 1,000 point scorer. Finishing her career as the all-time leading scorer at that time with more than 1,300 points. Being an exceptional student, she enrolled in Patriot League, the College of the Holy Cross, where she participated in four years of soccer for the Division I Crusaders, being named captain her senior year. She earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in English. At this time, I would like to invite up to the podium Kelly's sister, Miss Melissa Ambrose Dooley. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Melissa Dooley, and I am Kelly's little sister. Um, when I found out Kelly was inducted to uh, the West Boylston Hall of Fame, I was extremely proud. Um, Kelly is one of the most humble people you will ever meet, uh, so it came as no surprise to when I, when I called to congratulate her, her first response was to the effect of, why the heck would I be chosen for this? Um, even with all the awards she has received in high school, um, she couldn't fathom that she would be a Hall of Fame inductee. Kelly, no doubt, learned all she knew about hard work, determination, perseverance, and good work ethic from our parents. They practiced what they preached when it came to these qualities, so we knew firsthand what hard work really looked like. Mom and Dad, thank you very much for teaching us some of these very important life lessons. With everything Kelly did, she did it 110%. She was and still is incapable of doing anything mediocre. If you ask her to do something, she'll do it and then some more. And it wasn't because things came easy to her. It was because she worked her butt off to achieve it. One of the most amazing and valuable things to witness in high school, as her little sister, was not only her talent on the field, but it was her interaction with her teammates, her teammates and her coaches. People respected Kelly because she respected everybody else. It was a pretty big deal to be Kelly's sister. After, after high school, Kelly moved on to Holy Cross, where she played soccer. Although most of her four years were spent rehabbing from one injury to another and then another, she never quit. She was a team player through and through and did whatever it took to be a part of it. Not only was she a part of the team for all four years, but by senior year she was named captain even through all the injuries she sustained. I couldn't be more proud of my sister and all her achievements, and a big congratulations to the rest of the inductees as well. least so we'll get through it we'll do this um, and I swear I'm just gonna not just say what everyone else has said so far I actually did think this beforehand so I know it sounds like I'm just copying but I'm not I swear so I want to start off by thanking Rich and the whole committee honestly this whole day would be nothing without you so thank you for all of the hard work and details that went into this I know it's hours and hours of work so thank you I want to congratulate all the rest of the inductees honestly it's an honor to even be considered in the same breath as all of you and I honestly it's an honor and the fact that you guys paved the way for me coming up through West Boylston, I couldn't be more grateful. So thank you to all of you guys. Um, a few weeks ago, actually, when we started this whole process and Rich reached out to me, he asked me what my most memorable moment was within West Boylston Athletics. And I started thinking about it and thinking about it, and then I suddenly realized that, for me, it wasn't a specific game, it wasn't a statistic, it wasn't a championship, it wasn't anything like that. It was truly the people and the experiences that I had kind of gathered along those years at West Boylston. As everything from my coaches, so Mr. Garofoli, and how before every game, no matter what was happening, he would come over to our team huddle, team huddle with Queen of Victory pray for us, and we wouldn't take the court unless we heard that from him. Or how after a big game, he would be the first one weeping, just sobbing before, after the game, and we'd have a special napkin that we used to go blot his eyes with just so that he could continue on after that. It was Mr. Priestley who, you know, with all of the hard comments and my, one of my favorites, we were losing a game once and he looked over and he goes, you understand we're playing Perkins School for the Blind here, right? Like, how is this happening? So, you know, we really picked it up after that and continued on, which was great. Um, Mr. Mumby, my soccer coach, he was from, Brit uh, from England, so of course we got a real uh, fun time out of, you know, talking a British accent most of the time, which was awesome. 
Um, and then all of my teammates. So all of those people that I played with all four years, it was amazing. Um, and most of them actually are still good friends with me today. So I've been to their weddings, I've been to their baby showers, I've been to all of those amazing, amazing experiences in their life, which is so important to me. So those are kind of the things that I remember and that stick out the most for me. So um, I also definitely want to thank my family who's here with me today, my sister. Not many people get the opportunity to actually be teammates with their family members, so the fact I got to be on field and on court with my sister was amazing, so thank you for being amazing. Um, to my parents, my mom and dad, um, I know everyone's been talking about how great their parents are, but mine are the best, sorry. Um, from our first t-ball game when my dad had us out in the front yard showing us how to swing our hips, and it's not just with our arms to every travel game, every practice, every tournament over holidays, every everything. Um, I would be nothing without you guys and couldn't thank you guys enough, so thank you. And that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> Just a couple more minutes here. We have one more award to give. Going to hear from Mike quickly and me, and that will be the completion of this awesome day. Uh, and I remember Mary said they're having fun over here, but we're having fun over here. This has been a great day, believe me. I'd like to again invite up Mr. Roger Bacon to the uh, podium. Jake O'Connor dedicated many years of service to the MIAA, so my executive director at the MIAA, Mr. Bill Gain, who was unable to be at the to the family commitments, has asked Roger and I to make a special presentation to Jake on this being the occasion of him being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Jake, uh, come on up and I'll talk while you're walking up here. For your many years of dedicated service to the MIAA, we present you with this gift honoring your induction into the West Boylston Athletic Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Quick words, and let's have a, a great hand for our athletic director, Mr. Mike Bacchus. I promise I'll be very quick. Um, as a former West Boston student athlete, and now as the school's athletic director, it's truly an honor to be a part of the first uh, class for our Hall of Fame inductees. I'd like to once again thank the rest of the committee, the administrators for being here, all of the inductees and guests, the people in charge of our music in the background, and all of you for making this day possible. It was a great event, and we couldn't do it without any of you. So without further ado, I'm gonna invite Rich Riley back up to the podium. Thank you. In closing, I know I speak for everyone in, in attendance today and offering congratulations to all the inductees, family representatives, family, and friends. I'd like to also express my gratitude to my uh, committee and to everyone who contributed to the induction process. Thank you for attending, and may you all have a great and joyous holiday season. Good night, everyone. Drive forward.